This is Emilia Virtanen, a Finnish woman. Emilia can enjoy a stable and well-functioning society with a population of over 5 million, because today Finland is a modern welfare state trying to ensure that its citizens receive a basic standard of living, health care and opportunities for education. But this was not always the case. Finland's development from a poor agrarian society into a modern welfare state is the result of a long social development. At the time of Emilia Virtanen's ancestors, Finland was a very different place. Let's go back a little over a hundred years to the beginning of the 20th century, when Finland had not yet become independent. In those days, Finland, with a population of less than three million, was an autonomous part of the Russian Empire. Being autonomous meant that Finland had its own diet that could decide about certain things concerning Finland. The diet had representatives from the four estates, nobility, clergy, bourgeois and peasants. Women and the disadvantaged did not have the right to take part in the diet. And so Gustav Virtanen, Emilia's forefather, was unable to take part in politics in his home country. He's a sharecropper living in a small house on land that he does not own. Gustav works on his small piece of land from dawn to dusk to support his family. He also pays for the rent of his house by working on his landlord's farm on two days a week. All members of the family, including children, take part in farm work. Life is hard and they're constantly worried whether there's enough food to put on the table. In the early part of the 20th century, many children never reach adulthood. Child mortality was still high in Finland. About 12% of children died before their first birthday. Kustar, too, loses his two children. But then something happened in 1906 that would affect the life of Kustar Virtanen and his descendants even a century later. The Finnish diet decided, among the first countries in the world, to introduce universal and equal suffrage. This meant that everyone could have their say by voting, rich and poor, men and women. And so not only Kusta, but also his wife Ida get to vote for the first time and to contribute how the Finland develops in the next hundred years. When can I vote then? asks Matti, their firstborn. I would vote that daddy shouldn't have to work for the landlord at all. The First World War broke out in the 1910s and the Russian Empire collapsed. This was also when Finland declared independence on the 6th of December 1917. Unlike during Russian rule, Finland was now free to decide about its own affairs. Finland became a nation among nations. But Finnish society was by no means equal. Some were wealthy, while others felt that the promised better world was never coming. Social problems culminated and there was a civil war. Some 30,000 died in the civil war in 1918, most of them executed or in prison camps. The war ended in victory for the government forces. But although the war ended, people were still divided into two camps. However, there was a common understanding after the war that social problems should be addressed. So laws were enacted that improved the position of the most vulnerable people. The lack of public funds had been an obstacle during Finland's autonomy to developing social policies. And this was one of the reasons why there was a law in 1920 on progressive taxation, meaning that those who earned more had a higher tax rate. The aim was to reduce poverty and thereby improve social unity. But things progressed slowly, and there was still plenty of inequality in Finland in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. 
Despite everything, life of the Virtanen family has changed significantly. Unlike his father Kusta, Matti Virtanen no longer has to work in the fields of the large farm, because Matti bought the piece of land where they had been living. He manages his small farm with his wife Maya and their three children. Despite owning his farm, Matti's life is hard and there is plenty of work to do. The 1930s began with a global recession, the effects also to be felt in Finland. Rural Finland produces most of its food locally, and so the Virtanens have one horse, three cows, six chickens and two pigs. Their diet consists of potato, various fish and meat dishes, root vegetables, berries and porridges. When Matti was still a boy, he had received a basic education thanks to a teacher that visited the village occasionally. In 1921, the Finnish parliament decided on compulsory education for all children. So now in the 1930s, Matti and Maya's children go to school every day. <laughs> Educating everyone was considered socially important because extending the vote to all required that people should be properly educated. Matti has received a newspaper from his neighbors, and their daughter Lisa is reading the news to grandfather Kusta. There's an article about the Olympics to be held in Helsinki in 1940. The whole of Finland is rejoicing about this happy turn of events, she reads. 64 countries have been invited to take part, continues Lisa with enthusiasm. But the 1940 Olympics had to be cancelled because World War II began in 1939. The same year the Soviet Union attacked Finland, stopping social development in Finland. Although in the early 1930s, Finland had still very much been a divided country, towards the end of the decade, this division was no longer so pronounced thanks to an economic upswing. This made it possible for Finland to fight as a united country against the Soviet Union in World War II. During World War II, Finland fought two wars against the Soviets, called the Winter War and the Continuation War. During these wars, whoever was not fighting on the front had a duty to work in factories and farms, for example. This also applied to women, to a great extent in fact. And so Lisa Virtanen found herself in a factory too. This is where she hears that her brother Kalle has died on the front. Kalle is another casualty among the 90,000 Finns to die in the wars. Another 50,000 Finns suffer permanent disabilities. Finland lost the continuation war, which ended in 1944. Under the peace condition made between Finland and the Soviet Union, Finland had to push out any German troops in the country, which resulted in what was known as the Lapland War. The German troops retreated out of Finland in 1945. The peace agreement conditions also forced Finland to give up eastern parts of the country to the Soviets, with the population in those areas moved to Finland. A total of 420,000 Finns, or 11% of the entire population, were relocated after the war. In addition to losing land to the Soviets, Finland had to pay them war reparations totaling 300 million US dollars. These were paid primarily in the form of industrial products. Finland tried to recover from the war as quickly as possible. A period of reconstruction began. People were looking ahead and the country was being developed once again. A law was enacted in 1944 in Finland on health clinics for children before school age. The clinics gave advice to parents and expecting mothers and also vaccinated children. And as a result, child mortality figures went down significantly. 
Free school lunches were introduced in 1948. This made children healthier and they could focus better on learning. In 1948, a law was enacted on child benefits, with the state paying support to all families for any child under 16. A year later, the state began paying a benefit to all mothers. Free dental care for all school children started in 1956. Some of these services had already been provided to families who couldn't otherwise have afforded them. But now the idea was that as everyone had paid taxes according to their abilities into the common kitty, then everyone would also get the services they needed. Everyone pays and everyone gets. Food was rationed during the war and also after it. You were only allowed a certain amount of coffee, butter, meat and sugar, for example. This was done to ensure that necessary items were distributed as evenly as possible. Rationing was lifted gradually and was discontinued altogether in 1954. This was when the Virtanen's dinner table began to look better. In order for the Finnish industry to manufacture war operation products, it had to reform. When the last payment had been made to the Soviets in 1952, Finland began to export the products of its modern industry to other countries. After the war, Lisa Wirtanen stayed in the factory as a seamstress. Once rushing had finished, she was able to use her earnings to buy things for her home, which previous generations had not even been able to dream about. Lisa Wirtanen is living with her husband Eino and her four children in the village in the house they had built themselves. They haven't got electricity, and they have to get the water from the well, also in the winter. In winter time, they get around on skis on shorter distances. On Saturday evenings, they bathe in their own sound. Most families have their own sound. And finally, in 1952, the Olympics are held in Finland, and the Virtanens are listening to them on the wireless. More athletes have come to Finland than ever before. 4,925 athletes from 69 countries. And Finland wins gold! We can hear on the radio. Lisa's husband is a horseman at a logging site. A significant proportion of Finnish wealth is derived from timber, and up to 80,000 men work on logging sites in 1950. Finland's most important exports in the 1950s consisted of forest industry products. Forest management was taken seriously to ensure that the paper industry, for example, had as much raw material as possible. In 1953, the Virtanens get electricity in their home. Seppo Virtanen, the eldest son of Lisa and Eino, is overjoyed. When I'm an adult, I'm going to put electricity into everybody's home, says Seppo. After the war, a lot of children had been born and the small rural farms could no longer support them. What's more, agricultural methods had developed so much that farming was no longer so labor-intensive. On the other hand, workers were needed in towns too. So, in the hope of a better life, many moved to towns and even abroad. Most of the people who left the country went to Sweden. During the 1960s, almost 160,000 people moved from Finland to Sweden. Some moved even further, to Canada, the United States and Australia. Seppo Virtanen, the son of Lisa and Eino, has moved to town. He studied electrical engineering and as towns get bigger, he has plenty of work in new residential areas. Seppo's wife, Anneli, also goes out to work. She has a clerical job at a newly established comprehensive school. Their children are in the kindergarten during the day. In the 1970s, Finland introduced a free nine-year comprehensive school, ensuring all children a uniform basic education, regardless of social status or place of residence. Although children had been subject to compulsory education since the 1920s, the actual chances of completing their basic education depended on whether parents could afford it. In 
Seb Bonanoli have bought the flat in the town and also a car to go on holiday trips in the summer, sometimes venturing as far as Sweden. They also have a television set now, the centerpiece of their living room. Seppo is interested in both domestic and international events and he watches the news every day. Today the news is about the Helsinki CSE summit, bringing together all heads of state in Europe to discuss security and cooperation issues. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a few minutes ago... Sari Virtanen, the family's oldest child, is also watching the news with interest. From how many countries have the leaders arrived? She asked her father. He answers, 35. When I'm big, I'm going to visit them all, she says. The 1980s was a period of strong economic growth and the golden era of the welfare state. Child allowances, unemployment benefits and pensions were increased and working hours reduced. Finland enjoyed full employment. Finns became wealthier and consumed more. All this ended at the turn of the decade, when Finland suffered its worst economic crisis of its history. The depression was the result of many factors, one being the collapse of the Soviet Union, Finland's largest trading partner. During the recession, unemployment figures rose to record levels. But the recession was overcome reasonably quickly mainly thanks to technological developments. And halfway through the decade, the Finnish economy began to grow quickly and continued to do so for more than 10 years. The development was spearheaded by Nokia and Nokia mobile phones in particular. And indeed, Sari Virtanen works for Nokia. Her job is to design mobile phones. She travels around the world for her work and also during her free time. She has already visited 10 of the 35 countries that took part in the Finnish CSCE meeting 20 years earlier. The education level of the whole population improved up until the 1990s, and Finnish society became more equal too. Society promotes studying because financial support for studies has been available since the 1970s. The percentage of women in higher education increased, education opened up completely new possibilities in life. In 1994, Finland held a referendum on whether to join the European Union. Sari Virtanen goes to the polls too. The result was that 56.9% of the country was in favour of Finland joining the EU, which then took place in 1995. And that was the same year when Finland won its first ever Ice Hockey World Championship. In 2000, Finland elects its first female president as Tarja Halonen wins the presidential election. Her life is living testament that a child who was born in a working class family in the 1940s can be educated in the latter half of the century and rise to a socially significant position. Madame on voittanut ja mies on hävinnyt. In the 2010s, the Virtanen family has become international because Emilia's husband is American. Despite difficulties, Finnish society developed into a welfare state in the 20th century. This was possible through joint decision-making, improvement of social equality and hard work. This work is still ongoing and requires the continued efforts of all of us in Finland. Thank you.